Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on mapping a fixed income or bond portfolio for the FRM candidate. This refers to Chapter 11 VAR mapping. First, what is mapping? Mapping is when we take the portfolio and reduce it to a set of risk factors. It's a shortcut that tries to preserve the value of the portfolio but explain the portfolio in terms of a reduced number of risk factors. Why would we do that? Because when the portfolio is expressed as a set of risk factors it's much easier to manipulate and stress test. An actual portfolio, if we think about its complexity and for example the number of pairwise correlations, the actual portfolio is quite complicated. It's easier to measure the risk of the portfolio at the risk of simplification and approximation by reducing it to a set of risk factors. So in regard to a fixed income or bond portfolio, Jorian gives us three approaches. These are in order of sophistication such that principal mapping is the simplest approach to mapping a fixed income portfolio. It's so simple we probably will never do it cash flow mapping is probably the most sensible and sophisticated for us. So principal mapping reduces or maps the portfolio to a single risk factor, that is the weighted average time to maturity. Duration mapping also maps the portfolio to a single risk factor, in this case the weighted average duration of the portfolio and cash flow mapping maps the portfolio to a set of several risk factors. So I'll show you what I mean with an example that I think you'll agree is not too bad. And that is because I'm going to have a simple portfolio here of two bonds. I'm borrowing from Jorian Table 11 2. The simple portfolio has only two bonds. Both have a face of 100. One is a medium term bond with a maturity of 5 years and a 6% coupon. The other bond is a short-term bond. It matures in one year with a 4% coupon. So we've got a, two bonds in the portfolio. One is medium term, one is short term. So down here we've got the five years with a little gap. I'll show you why there's a little gap. And then the two bonds here. Here's that first bond and its future value cash flows. We're going to do everything here in annual compounding to keep it simple. That first bond generates a cash flow of a six dollar coupon in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and finally in the fifth year a six dollar coupon plus return of the principal. The second bond in the first years, because it's a short-term bond, will return the four dollar coupon and the entire face value. So there's a single cash flow for the second bond. So right here you see for the five years, I'm an annual. I'm simply illustrating the future expected cash flows here for this bond with $6 coupon, here for the second bond with $4 coupon. Then the spot rates here, and I did, I borrowed these from Jory, and these could be any spot rates. These aren't really the point. The spot rates here do indicate an upward sloping term structure of spot rates, so that's good. They aren't important. Now we go to the three different ways to map the fixed income bond portfolio or the bond portfolio. If we want to map the portfolio with princip by principle, look how simple this is. We have a, f a bond, a five-year bond and a one-year bond. That means, and they both are of a face value of 100, so for our purposes, the, our portfolio is equally weighted among the two bonds. The at one is five, one is one year. The average time to maturity is therefore three years, right here. And so we map the entire portfolio value of 200, again 100 plus 100, against the weighted average term to maturity of three years. See how straightforward that is? We've preserved the value of the portfolio as 200, and we mapped against a single risk factor, the weighted average term to maturity. Duration is similar but improves because we know from the study of fixed income that the a better approximation of a bond's sensitivity or risk is duration that is its sensitivity to a change in interest rates 
and in this case the duration I'm not going into the detail here but the d duration is a weighted average duration of each of the components and the weighted average duration for this portfolio happens to be somewhere between two and three years if we think about a Macaulay duration so imagine it's somewhere in here and we are mapping the full portfolio value of two hundred dollars against the weighted average duration of the portfolio which is just going to be the average of the two bond durations and it falls right here and again we've mapped the portfolio to a single risk factor finally let's consider the most sophisticated and we're getting more accurate now with the cash flow mapping and here if we take this first year there's a six dollar coupon on the first bond and the second bond uh, throws off its entire cash flow of hundred and four dollars so there's a future value of a hundred and ten dollars and the spot rate is four percent so I won't don't need to go too much into the formula here but we're just taking the future cash flow and discounting it by the spot rate to give this number here a hundred and five dollars and seventy seven cents is the present value of the cash flows in the first year If we go to the second year we're expecting a six dollar coupon the present value of that six dollar coupon is five dollars and forty eight cents and so on what I have here then are because I have am expecting five years worth of future cash flows one year two years three years four years fifth and final year future cash flows I have five present value or discounted cash flows as we would expect they sum to the portfolio value of 200 so this is really just a time value of money exercise these then these then points become technically in the mapping what are called term structure vertices but now we're mapping the portfolio to these five factors so you see the difference with principal mapping one factor the weighted average term of maturity with duration mapping one factor weighted average duration cash flow mapping mapping to each of the five so-called term structure vertices so that's sort of an introduction of map the three ways we can map the fixed income portfolio. This is David Harper, The Bonac Turtle. Thanks for your time. <music>